Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James grounded family Bible study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Numbers chapter 10. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Make thee two trumpets of silver. Of a whole piece shalt thou make them, one piece. Take one block of silver, and out of that block of silver, make a, make a trumpet. Don't make two pieces. Take two pieces of silver, one piece, like the candlestick. That thou mayest use them for the calling and assembly, and for the journeying of the camp. So this trumpet, this trumpet, Gathers the people together, or we're on the move, we're on the march. When they shall blow with them, all the assembly shall assemble themselves to thee at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. So both are blown, everyone gathers. And if they blow but with one trumpet, then the princes which are heads of the thousands of Israel shall gather themselves unto thee. One trumpet, only the heads of the people go. When you blow an alarm, then the camps that lie on the east parts shall go forward. We talked about the east, west, south camps before. Now, this would be a symbolic of air raid sirens. You know, when they go off, you got to do something. You got to be aware. When you are you see the cavalry and they blow that trumpet, dun, 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 that means something. There's a trumpet for charge, there's a trumpet for retreat, there's a trumpet to gather, just like you find in the Bible. How interesting. And verse 6, when you blow an alarm the second time, then the camps that lie on the south side shall take their journey, and they shall blow an alarm for their journeys. And you're going to see that they're going to blow these trumpets once they get into the, across the Jordan, in the promised land, when they get into Jericho, they're going to use the trumpets. Verse 7, But when the congregation is to be gathered together, you shall blow, but you shall not sound an alarm. So there's a difference in the blowing. One is, hey, everyone, come on, we got to go to battle, something's up. And another one's, hey, let's gather together. Then you, you see this in early church history when you get church buildings, which are not Bible, but you see a bell. And they ring the bell and that would be time for church. If you really wanted to be right, according to the Bible as a church, you should have put trumpets in your towers. Because the Bible speaks about at the rapture, it's not at the ding-dong we're going to be gathered in heaven. It's the last trump. When the angels shall blow that trump. Trumpets are very special in the Bible, not bells. Verse 6, when you blow an alarm the second time, the camps that lie on the south side shall take their journey and shall blow an alarm for their journeys. But when the congregation is to be gathered together, you shall blow, but you shall not sound an alarm. And the sons of Aaron, the priests, shall blow with the trumpets. So the priests are in charge of the trumpets. And they shall be to you for an ordinance forever throughout your generation. So the one that blows the trumpets is the Levites. And you'll see that in Jericho. If you go to war in your land against the enemy that oppresses you, then you shall blow an alarm with the trumpets. There's your airway that lasted throughout all Europe during World War II. The enemies come. They're flying overhead. They're dropping bombs. Everyone run to shelter. Then you shall blow an alarm with the trumpets, and you shall be remembered before the Lord your God, and you shall be saved from your enemies. 
So God even calls upon these trumpets. When God hears those trumpets, all right, you're calling upon them. Again, yeah, instead of a bell, it should have been a trumpet for the churches. Also in the day of your gladness, and in your solemn days, and in the beginnings of your months, you shall blow with the trumpets over your burnt offerings, and over your sacrifice of your peace offering. So the holidays, the holy days, Passover, the first day of the month, when that when the you brought your sacrifice, you gathered at the door of the tabernacle, not only did you bring your animal, not only did the priest say, Here, lay your hands, kill this animal, and they slay that animal, and they put the, the, the meat on the on the uh, altar there, they're washing themselves, people are gathering, and the Levites are doing their jobs, but while that's going on, the trumpets are blowing. Praising God. Over your sacrifice of your peace offerings, they may be to you for a memorial before your God. I am the Lord your God. Now, you know what, what the counterfeit of this is? It's drums. And drums were used in the valley. Oh, man, I can't think of the name now. Oh, I can't think of the God's name now. Uh, no, not Dagon. There's a God in the Bible. I forget his name is right now. What? Molech, that's him. And Molech was, you would take your baby and put him in the arms of this idol, and pulleys and levers and gears would take those arms, swing that baby into the fire that's in his belly. And you would burn your sacrifice there. And to drown out the, the weeping of the parents and the crying of the baby, they boom, 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 they, they play the drum. That's the history of the drum in the Bible. Here, to gather out the, the sounds of the animals being killed and being slain and bah and, and moo and all that are the trumpets. The trumpets give a sound of God glorifying God. I mean, you gotta realize what kind of scene is at that door of the tabernacle on a feast day. There are animals being killed, there is blood, there, there probably flies, it's probably an odor, there's smoke, there's there's the priests running around, there are people gathering at the at the door of the tabernacle, and there's animals and and you hear God's trumpets being played out. And it came to pass on the 20th day of the second month, in the second year. So it's been two years. Or in two months, the 20th day, that the cloud was taken up from off the tabernacle of the testimony. Now we already learned previous chapters. That means we're going, we're moving. When that cloud moved, they moved. And the children of Israel took their journeys out of the wilderness of Sinai. They're leaving Mount Sinai. And the cloud rested in the wilderness of Paran. And they, okay, now we're going to look at the journeys. They first took their journeys according to the commandment of the Lord, that cloud, that fire, by the hand of Moses. Moses is in charge. In the first place went the standard of the camp of the children of Judah. Judah goes first. That's where Jesus Christ comes from. According to their armies, and over his host was Nashon, the son of Abinadab. And over the host of the tribe of the children of Issachar was Nathiel, the son of Zuar. We, we discussed this in Numbers 1, 2, and 3, and 4 about the gathering of the camp, north, south, east, and west. And over the host of the tribe of the children of Zebon was Elad, the son of Halon. And the tabernacle was taken down. We talked about in previous chapter in Numbers. The sons of Gershon and the sons of Merari set forward bearing the tabernacle. The standard of the camp of Reuben set forth according to their armies. And over his host was Eliezer, the son of Sidur. And over the host of the tribe of the children of Simeon was Shimeel, the son of Zarashtai. And over the host of the tribe of the children of Gad was Elsha, the son of Deir. And the Kohites set forward bearing the sanctuary. And the other did set up the tabernacle against they came. So the armies are picking up. They're moving. Now remember the Kohites didn't get no wagons. They are carrying the ark. They are carrying all the furniture that has staves on their shoulders. And the standard of the camp of the camp of Ephraim set forward through their armies. And over his host was Elishema, the son of Emimad. And it's okay you can't pronounce these names. I don't think they're going to beat you up when you get there. Oh, no. 
you give it a shot. And when you're reading your Bible, you're reading your Bible through, just go over it with your eyes and shoot them on it. Go over the host, try to put you in the net. You know, just put your eyes on it. You don't have to get it correct. Well, you don't have it correct anyways, English. And these are Hebrew names. Over the host of trying the children of Manasseh was Gemiel, the son of Padezer. Over the host of the tribe of the children of Benjamin was Abaddon, the son of Gideon. And the standard of the camp of the children of Dan set forward, which was their rear rearward. He's in the back. Of all the camps throughout their hosts, and over his host was Ahazer, the son of Amishadai. And over the host of the tribe of the children of Asher were Pagiel, the son of Akron. Over the host of the tribe of the children of Naphtali was Ahira, the son of Enam. These were the journeys of the children of Israel according to their armies when they set forward. This is how they would move. This is how you were to see them. If you were up on a mountain watching them move by their standards, by their flag. And Moses said unto Hobad, the son of Reuel, the Mennonite, Moses' father-in-law. Now Moses' father-in-law is Regil. And he goes by many different names. Jethro in Exodus 3, 17. Uh, Hobab is Regil's son, making Moses and him brothers-in-laws, I think. Brothers-in-law. So before Moses sets out, he says, he goes up to his brother-in-law and says, hey, come with us. Come. Moses is witnessing to his family as they're about to set forth. Here they're all getting ready. He goes, hey, come with us. Well, yeah, now watch. Watch the witnessing in the Old Testament. We are journeying unto the place of which the Lord said, I will give it to, to you. Now for us, it's New Jerusalem. It's heaven. But for the Jew, there's a promised land. That's the difference between the Old Testament and the New Testament. But hey, there's a place for God has prepared. Jesus said, I am preparing a mansion. I am preparing New Jerusalem. Come with us. I will give you, come thou with us, and we will do thee good. Good news. No Christian should do bad. For the Lord has spoken good concerning Israel. And he said unto him, I will not go. That's the many that will not go. But I will depart to my own land. It pictures a lost man. And to my kindred. I'm going to go back to my family. I don't want to do this. I don't want to obey you. I don't want to obey your God. I'm doing just fine. His own land was not the promised land. And he said, leave us not. See, Moses tried again. Come on, that second. Come on. I pray thee, for as much as thou knowest how we are to encamp in the wilderness, thou mayest be to us instead of eyes, a guide, advice. Help us as we go along. Because you know this wilderness. We can use you, and you can come with us. And it shall be, if thou go with us, yea, all right, come on. It shall be that what goodness the Lord shall do unto us, the same will do unto thee. Now look what God's saying. Moses is saying, about God, listen, get saved for the Christian today and be right. We go to heaven. God will treat us good in heaven. We need your help. And they departed from the mount of the Lord's three days journey and the ark of the covenant of the Lord went before them. It leaves before them. In three days journey to search out a resting place. That ark goes up ahead of them. That cloud goes up before them. And finds that place. And this picture is symbolic in such a way that when God called those animals to Noah's ark. That he went before those animals some way and they followed. Into that ark. As Israel is following God now into the promised land. And the cloud of the Lord was upon them by day when they went out of the camp. And it came to pass when the ark set forward that Moses said, rise, rise up, Lord, and let thy enemies be scattered. And let them that hate thee flee before thee. 
And when it rested, he said, Return, O Lord, unto many thousands of Israel. So that movement is set forth by God. And it looks like Hobab did not go. The family of Moses, of his wife's family. And you know what Moses says? Bye. We're going forward. You want to stay? I am not staying. You want to come? Come. And that's what you got to do as far as your family when you witness them. They don't want to go? Bye. They want to come? Amen. Who are Moses? Yeah, all right, come. But Moses didn't stop with just one witness. He didn't take one excuse. He says, no, I don't want to go. Hey, come on, man. God will bless you. God will take care of you. He's, he's trying. Give effort. But don't stay behind if they will. Stay behind.